Hello everybody. Welcome back to Sponge's Tech Tips. I'm Sponge. Hello. Up here in Washington State. Uh, it's the middle of May. Beautiful. We got the cottonwoods falling. If you see it's, it looks like it's snowing. But this just started today. You can see them blowing everywhere. Honestly a real pain in the ass especially when they go into your eye when you're trying to work and one blows right in your eye. Uh, working on a 2012 Honda Civic today. Nice little car. Uh, this one was in a front end little fender bender. Um, it had some a little bit of bumper damage and a broken headlight grill. It was pretty minor, but it was enough to um, activate the seat belt and lock the seat belt in place and also uh, in turn activating the airbag uh, detection light. So today we are replacing the driver's seat belt. Before we get started, let's check the production date on the VIN tag. Let me get my stupid reading glasses on so I can see. Uh, 2009 of 2012. So this may we have it listed as a 2012 uh, window tag. It says 2012, but it may be a 2013, just on that production date. Um, but uh, verify that yours is uh, similar. I mean, these things will span a couple years. So this one's going to be a little bit longer. It's going to be start to finish. Well, not start to finish. It's going to be start to removing the seatbelt. I'm not going to do the reinstallation of the new seatbelt. I'm just going to go all the way, uh, show you a couple things. We're going to have a few tech tips in here. One is removing the back seat. Um, two will be removing the trim panels along the bottom and the B pillar. And then the final one will be uh, accessing the seatbelt and disconnecting it and getting ready for replacement. So, uh, in this situation, here's our brand new seatbelt straight from Honda. Uh, you can buy used. You can buy used parts if you want. Uh, when you're dealing with airbag stuff, it may actually benefit to uh, have a brand new part, but obviously you're going to pay up from it. So. Let's go across a couple of our tools. Now, I haven't, uh, I've only kind of looked at a couple of the, I've done, I've done dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of these, so I think I got it right, but we, we may need a tool or two that I have forgotten here. So uh, let's start off. We're going to need a ratchet with an extension, 10 millimeter socket. Uh, deep socket is not necessary, uh, regular socket would be fine, but you are going to need the extension for the rear seat removal. You don't need it, but it makes it easier. We are going to be needing a 14 mil socket. Again, doesn't need to be a deep socket. Um, we need a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, this one's a small one. Uh, the medium size is the correct fit but all I could find was my stubby doesn't really matter it's easy to get at uh, selection of panel poppers whichever you prefer uh, I just put out both so you can see uh, flat head small flat head screwdriver for prying or a small pick for prying um, you choose what you have on hand but all of these will work uh, I've also kept out my socket set just in case we're gonna set that out of the way Let's move these tools out of the way and we will take our seatbelt out and just get it out of our way to start off with. I'll just set that on the roof right there. Okay, first and foremost, the back seat. Um, not difficult, but a little tricky if you've never done it before. Underneath, if you come in on either side and you run your fingers carefully along the front, Kind of hard to see, but you're, I'm about 10 inches in. There's a little pull tab. I'm going to push down and pull out that tab. I will show you the tab once we pull it out. Uh, but this will, this will kind of give you an idea. The other one is in the same spot on the other side. While we're getting at it, 
This is where your ratchet and your 10 millimeter socket and extension come in. Behind the seat, here's your buckles down low. I'm gonna pry this down. Oh, my socket went right in the way. Right there, you will see a 10 millimeter bolt. And this is what you need that extension for. Now I already loosened it but we will just get it out of the rest of the way. It's out, it's a pretty long one, but, and just like I tried to avoid it fell. Oh, I got it, okay. There's the bolt. There, I'll show you this when it opens up too, but there's a little hook that holds it. Set that on the floor, someplace where you won't lose it. We'll move our socket and ratchet aside. And then we will get after the other clip. Same place on the other side. Reach in, pull the little lever forward. It comes unhooked. I actually hooked this one. This one popped back in, so let's redo this one. There it goes. Okay, once those are both in, uh, unhooked and the bolt is out, you wanna just lift the seat up. Let's see if we can get back far enough. Lift the seat up. And then pull it forward. Seat belts will kind of loosen. And the entire rear seat is now loose. And we can pull this out. If it's clean, I like to just set it up on the roof. Gets it out of the way. So, uh, now that we've got this, kind of gross underneath these seats. You never know what you might find. But now I can show you these clips. So, on the front of the seat, there is this little metal you know, horseshoe style bracket. There's one on each side. And when those go in, they clip into that right there. So when you reach up underneath your seat, you grab the black, pull forward, and that's what releases it. There's one on each side. Now, um, you don't have to take out the back seat for this, but it's such an easy task and I think it makes the next steps even easier. So that's why I do it. So the next step, now you're gonna get your panel popper. We're going to take off our kick plates. The back one obviously is the one why we took the seat off is because it kind of it kind of gets in the way when you're trying to remove this here. Now there is another piece that you might opt to take out. Again, it's not necessary, but the bolster right here on the back seat. If you're having trouble getting this from under here, you can quickly unbolt that. There's a single 10 millimeter bolt right here and you can unbolt that. This whole thing slides up and out of the way. But I actually don't think that that's even necessary at all. All right, next part you're gonna do to this, uh, this kick plate here or sill plate, whatever you wanna call it. I just reach down and with my hand, I pop it forward can see how it popped forward and then we're just gonna go straight up with it I like to use my hands if the clips are having trouble coming free this is where your panel popper will come in uh, I'll just use this one we can go underneath and we can pop that up and this thing will pop up and right out of our view let's make sure we don't lose any of these little these uh, clips, pressure clips, whatever you want to call it. So we can just set this aside now, okay? Um, next thing we're gonna do since we're back here, let's pull our weather stripping. Now, the weather stripping has to be pulled because this panel on the B-pillar has these little overlapping tabs there and there that the weather stripping goes over. And to prevent from damaging your weather stripping, you just pop that off real easy. Get that out of your way. All right, now we're gonna go, oh, wait, we gotta grab a couple tools. Let's grab our Phillips head and our flat head. We're gonna go up to the front seat now. Make sure the seat is all the way back, out of your way. Next thing we have to do is we have to remove this front driver's seat sill plate, which wraps around the trunk and the gas filler pull, the handle that opens those. 
Uh, you won't, if you're doing this on the passenger side, obviously you don't need to worry about that. This is where either your little pick or a flat head come into play. Mm -hmm. Down on the bottom, let's see if we can turn this around. You'll see a little groove. Put that right in there, pop it up, it pops off. Okay. Underneath, there's a single Phillips head screw. I've already backed it out most of the way. We'll just remove that the rest of the way. Okay. Set the screw aside so you don't lose it. Maybe keep all your parts together. Okay, now the next thing. Same as we did on the back one, we're gonna reach down. Now this one's a little tighter because you've got the, um, the chair to deal with. But if you reach your hand down and you get your fingers under, you pry out the bottom and then pop it straight up, okay? Same thing on the front, pop it out, pop it up. Okay, now at this point, you're going to slide the whole thing forward. You're gonna lift it up and slide it forward so the handle will pop out of that little tray. Okay, we're done with that one, set it aside. You'll notice the, the lock, the valet lock for the trunk also comes up with that. Just make sure it all stays in place. Next part, weather strip. Oh. Uh, at this point now, I like to move the seat all the way forward, okay? So, if you have power seats, obviously leave your power connected, run that all the way forward. If you have manual seats, just manually do it. We're going to take the weather stripping off the front door also, for the same reason as we did on the back, just to get it off these little tabs, okay? Now we're going to go back towards the back, because now we've got free access. Let's climb in here. So now I'm sitting where the back seat used to be. You want to reach right here. The bottom plate overlaps the top plate. So you're going to use your fingers or your panel popper. You want to pop this little clip off. There's a little, a little hook right there. You just want to pop it forward or pop it inward. We're going to do the same thing with the front. Again, you can use a panel popper. I like to use my hands just because it gives me a lot of control. I don't break any plastic when I do that. So now we've got the top loose. We're going to pop the bottom loose. This might... Oh, there it goes. It's popped right off. You can see we've got the compression clips. Top ones are just regular clips, but the bottom ones are those removable compression clips. There's two of them at the bottom there. Okay, let's move that out of the way. All right, now we're on to the top. The top piece, we've got two clips right here. These are a tiny, they're a tiny bit tricky. You might use a tool if you want, if you feel like you're gonna break them. Again, if I get, if I get my finger close, I can pop it free. Same thing over here, let's get our fingers close. There we go, pop that off, okay? Now, at the top, at this point, it pops out and down, out and down. So you see you've got this large kind of a, a, a shim, if you will, a sleeve that goes up inside the headliner. So you gotta kinda out just a little bit and down and pull that aside. Now we've got it free. We have our seat belt exposed. I should have showed you. So um, what happens a lot of times if you're in an accident and your, your seat belt locks up on you, it just locks up. So normally the seat belt would retract on a, you know, like old mini blinds, but it's completely locked into place. Now some places do uh, repair these. And sometimes they're just cheap enough. It's just easier just to uh, just to buy a new one. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do now we need our little pick. Okay. Now at this point, I want to just um, recommend, if I will, uh, it's a good time to make sure that your negative is removed from your battery. That way you no longer have any power going to any of the system. Uh, just to avoid any rare, rare chance that an airbag could, could deploy when you're doing this. Uh, again, very, very rare. 
Oh, actually I'm wrong. We don't need the pick. This one actually has the plug. So, all right, if you're dealing with a, a just the black pick um, plug here with the yellow safety clip, you wanna use your pick, get in there, and just pop that out a little bit. All right, let's get in closer, you can see. See how I just pop that off. Now once I do that, the whole thing just un comes undone. Just like so. Now, this one, I didn't. I should have looked at the new one I got. It actually has a secondary plug, so we don't have to do that. But, uh, so we'll just plug this back in, push the safety clip back down. But in this one, we actually have a plug and to undo the plug, you see this little black, you just pry that down and it pops right out. Now don't force these things. You don't want to force any of these because you can break them. If you get a, if you break them, they're not going to go back together. You could damage it and now, next thing you know, you're into fixing an entire wiring harness. Okay, next thing, we're onto the seat belt now. So at this point, you don't need your extension. You are gonna need your ratchet. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to jog the, the switching sockets here. Okay, we are on to the 14 mil socket. That's what you're gonna loosen the bottom one. So I haven't gone this far yet, but Again, I've done plenty of these, so it's pretty easy. All right, we got that one almost all the way out. We're gonna now move up here to the top. Again, 14 mil. This one's pretty shallow, so you gotta get a good grab on it. There we go. It's loose enough we can do the rest by hand it is out okay and then the last thing you need to do we need to go back to the 10 millimeter let me pop that free back to the 10 mil socket and at the top of your seat belt you've got a single 10 millimeter bolt right there Drop the phone again, guys. Sorry about that. All right. It's loose enough. We can do it by hand. Now, make sure to not lose any of these nuts and bolts. Just set them aside. Set them somewhere where you're not going to lose them. We are out. Set it down there. Now let's go back to our 14 mil. This one's hand tight or hand loose, I guess. And just like that, our new, our old seatbelt, our damaged seatbelt is out. Okay, so you are going to have to disconnect it from the seat, uh, but I was just going to take you this far um, just to show you how to get to it. Um, we've got a couple things that might help you for, for multiple different reasons trying to get at it, but that is how we do it, guys. All right, well, hopefully for you Honda Civic owners, this helps you out. Uh, any of you techs that have never done this before, this uh, is pretty common sense stuff, but maybe this helps you out also. Make sure to like the page. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'm going to keep keep doing more how-tos and, and the cars. We've got all makes and models going here, and I get to touch a little bit of everything when it comes to uh, brands and models of cars and you never know what tomorrow is going to hold so so subscribe to the channel hit the like button and feel free to comment all right guys see you on the next one